COVID-19 is affecting our working practices in East Lancashire Hospital's pharmacy services. This film contains the most up-to-date guidance as of 9th of April 2020 to allow you all to do an effective job and stay safe. Getting the basics right is critical to preventing the spread of coronavirus to other people. That means socially distancing yourself from colleagues and patients, trying to keep two metres apart and not being afraid to tell someone to step back, washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds when required and certainly when you leave a clinical area and before eating and changing clothes immediately when you get home and having a shower. Guidance for how to safely work on wards during the COVID-19 pandemic and any specialist personal protective equipment required, PPE, is under constant review. The most up-to-date slide will always be on the COVID-19 notice board in the corridor. Please refer to that. For clinical areas where a patient is receiving therapy that is aerosol generating, such as nebules or high flow oxygen, then you'll need a full gown, eye protection and FFP3 mask. So unless you've been fit tested, then do not enter these areas or side rooms. Remember to maintain social distancing and wash your hands when you leave an area. What about the other regular pharmacy ward based activities? Essentially, these are the same as before COVID-19, providing you follow trust guidance on when to wear PPE. So medicines reconciliation, red dot supply requests and discharges will continue to be our main duties. We need to make sure our patients are safe when they arrive and leave hospital and they have the medicines they need when they need them. Medicines reconciliation continues to be the single most important intervention you will make for all patients entering hospital. Probably even more so in the current situation as other staff will be focused on treating what is in front of them and may be less mindful about regular medicines which still matter, especially critical medicines. We don't want to cause harm through unintentional omission of regular medicines. Confirming the best possible medicines history is only something pharmacy staff can, will and need to do. We have a handy guide on the notice board for completing medicines reconciliation in tricky COVID situations. Check this out for some practical tips to get the best possible medicines histories. The new pharmacy communications sheet, accessible through EMM, will help you do a more effective job as it pulls through safety alerts from EPTS, that's the electronic patient tracking system that everyone calls the bedboard. Amongst other things, this shows whether patients are suspected or positive with COVID-19, and as well as the regular information that you enter, it also has new features like VTE status, falls risk, must score, height and weight, provided these have been recorded by other clinicians. And remember, one of the key interventions of DWP is to ensure correct VTE assessment and action occurs to prevent harm. We do want pharmacists to continue participating in ward rounds and they've been identified as a key member of the multidisciplinary team reviewing patients on a daily basis. Handling pods, patients on drugs, is okay. Make sure you wear the right PPE and remember to wash your hands when you've completed this task. Red dot supply requests matter and be particularly mindful of drug interactions. Although there is currently no treatment for COVID-19, many people will have associated infections which require macrolide antibiotics. These have a high interactive potential, so things like statins will need emitting. And discharges matter. We want patients off their ward within one hour of the decision to discharge them. And we want them out of the hospital within two hours of that decision. That means transfer of care discharge letters may be generated in a hurry. At the best of times, around three quarters of these will contain errors around medicines, which could be a safety time bomb once the patient gets home. Do what you do best. Make sure the medicines information on letters is correct. Make sure the letters do get completed and sent, ideally at the same time the patient leaves, so both they or their carers have a copy. And make sure eligible patients are referred to their community pharmacist. We know at the best of times, GPs don't always update their records in a timely manner then unintentionally issue prescriptions for medicines that have stopped or changed or miss new medicines off. But we are not in the best of times, so use your skills and available tools to get patients safely home. And speaking of tools, make sure when you return your laptops, shut them fully down properly and then put them in the correct holder, the right way around so the charging unit is not broken, and plug them in so they are ready to work at the next session. And remember to maintain social distancing and wash your hands when you leave an area. The following information will help you if you are supporting a patient who has COVID-19 in a critical care setting. Pharmacy technicians covering these areas ensure critical medicines are readily available. 
They oversee medicines usage and monitor drug availability in collaboration with the procurement team and critical care pharmacists. They liaise with the ward staff to ensure any required medicines are made available promptly and they will be familiar with the IV pumps and review daily usage to plan adequate stock level replenishment. And they perform medicines reconciliation, balancing consent issues whilst patients are sedated and liaising with family members who are not able to visit. It is likely patients will have CAP, community acquired pneumonia. So watch out for its early stages. They will need the right antibiotics. Their CURB65 severity score will determine what the initial treatment will be, so follow the antimicrobial formulary, remembering to start smart, then focus. Remember to switch to oral or enteral as soon as it's safe to do so. And this concept now has a name. IVOST. IV oral antibiotic switch therapy. If they require invasive ventilation, then it's usually piperacillin and tazobactam with clarithromycin for five to seven days, or vancomycin and kiprofloxacin if they're penicillin allergic. Antibiotics may be changed as per micro advice. And remember, I bossed. Also check their renal function in case dose adjustments are required. Prednisolone is not recommended unless patients are admitted with underlying conditions which make them steroid dependent or they have COPD exacerbation. Corticosteroids should be avoided where possible due to their immunosuppressive effect and letting coronavirus cause severe harm. Fluid balance of patients should be monitored closely. Aggressive fluid resuscitation is not recommended as there's a higher risk of pleural edema and increased oxygen demands. However, patients are likely to be very dehydrated due to the persistent fever and reduced oral fluid intake. Oxygen therapy also causes fluid loss by drying airways. Ensure patients have adequate physiological IV fluids such as plasmalite, especially if they cannot eat or drink normally. Fluid output is just as important. Patients passing urine adequately is an indicator their kidneys are working effectively. Expect to see high doses of furosemide given alongside these fluids to aid diuresis and offload any pulmonary edema. Inadequate fluid input can potentiate hypotension. On critical care, vasopressors such as noradrenaline or vasopressin are used to mitigate this once a patient is sedated. Ensuring optimal fluid balance beforehand will reduce the need for these. So observe and ask the MDT about this. Patients will require oxygen, which will vary in terms of their underlying comorbidities. Expect to see patients step up from venturi masks to non-invasive ventilation, such as CPAP or BiPAP on wards, or intubation and ventilation in a critical care setting. And if patients have underlying respiratory problems, they may require nebulized therapy, such as salbutamol or sodium chloride to assist their breathing and clearance of the airway. Nebulised ipratropium should be limited where possible as the aim of treatment is to aid airway clearance as opposed to dry up secretions. Expect to see mucolytics such as carbocysteine used to further aid airway clearance. The elderly, the immunocompromised and patients with other underlying health problems are more likely to deteriorate and require admission to critical care. This is mainly because they have inadequate oxygen saturation requiring sedation into a coma, intubating and ventilating. The national guidance is also recommending paralysing with medicines and proning them, that means lying them face down on a bed. Patients are also likely to require cardiovascular support. The critical care team have access to drugs for intubation, sedation and ventilation. For induction, that's generally propofol 1% for anaesthesia, succimethonium or rocuronium for muscle paralysis, metaraminol for blood pressure support via a peripheral cannula if required, and adrenaline in case of cardiorespiratory arrest or anaphylaxis. For sedation and cardiovascular support, it's propofol 2% for continued anaesthesia, fentanyl for sedation and analgesia, metaraminol via a peripheral cannula for blood pressure control, or noradrenaline, which is via a central catheter only, and atracurium for continued muscle paralysis. There may be times when there's a shortage of some of these medicines, and we have developed separate guidance for alternate options. Pharmacy staff are working to supply batches of these drugs to enable anaesthetists to grab these medicines quickly if they need to intubate and sedate a deteriorating patient. This also helps conserve medicine stocks. In the meantime, make it a priority to check the availability of these drugs in critical care and acute admission areas. There are many complications that can occur to a patient managed in a critical care environment, and medicines are involved in managing these. If something looks unfamiliar to you, Check with a colleague to see if it's normal in those circumstances. It may be a prescribing error. 
and when patients step down from a critical care environment, some of the medicines they were being supported with need stopping. So again, if you're unsure, ask a critical care trained colleague. And we'll finish where we started. Wash your hands regularly, keep your two meter social distance, wear the right PPE depending on the area you're working in. Advice will change over time, so keep up to date with messages via email, briefings, on Ollie and on the general channel on Slack. And be helpful and flexible. Be kind to yourself and your colleagues. We will come out the other side of this and we'll get through this together. Ahem. Thank you.